You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Oh, let's talk about this case in Texas where um, on her 46th birthday, the family of an unarmed black woman was shot and killed by a Baytown police officer in May of 2019. They have filed a federal law, civil rights lawsuit today. Uh, Pamela Turner encountered Officer Juan De La Cruz, uh, and she was in emotional distress. De La Cruz was indicted by Harris County Grand Jury in September 2020, more than a year after Turner's death. He's charged with felony aggravated assault by a public servant. Uh, ben, you put a video out, uh, and this took so this took place in Baytown, Texas, or Bel Air, Texas. Baytown, Texas. Okay, Baytown, Texas, what? and so uh, uh, so so Baytown, folks, uh, is uh, east of Houston. Uh, if so, if you're traveling up towards Beaumont, Texas, towards Louisiana, uh, you would go through Baytown. I know it very well. I have lots of relatives who live there, uh, and uh, this it was, I was I saw a video that you put out on Instagram describing how heinous this is. I, I want to play that and then talk about it. So here we go. If you were outraged when you saw the video of how police tragically killed George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, then you should be equally outraged when you see the video of how the police tragically killed Pam Turner, an unarmed black woman in Baytown, Texas. Pop the head. It is shocking and stunning, Ben Crump, to watch that video and to think that his only way of containing her was to shoot and kill her? Yeah, it, it is just so outrageous, Roland, when you think about it. Attorney Devin Jacob and I filed a federal civil rights wrong for death lawsuit, and it goes to this disrespect for black women. I mean, to shoot her down like a dog when he could have did any number of things. Monique Presley and I talked about how he could have created distance. He could have called for backup. He could have got behind cars. He could have yelled verbal commands. He could have did any number of things uh, other than fire five shots, hitting uh, Pamela Turner three times, one in the face, one in the chest, one in the stomach, and this unarmed black woman who was on her back screaming, I'm pregnant. I mean, rolling... If you are outraged by George Floyd, we got to get outraged uh, in justice for Pamela Turner. Breonna Taylor's mother, uh, Tamika Palmer, came to Houston to stand with uh, Chelsea Rubin, the 23-year-old daughter of Pamela Turner, who has pretty much been fighting a lot alone by herself. So I'm so grateful, Roland, that you're covering this matter because we need everybody to stand with our black women we got to protect our black women. They cannot be killed like this and nobody say a word about it. And this t this took place in 2019, two years ago? And, and two years ago, May 13th. And so we're going to march on Baytown on May 13th. If you're free, we would love to have you come back home to help lead the effort because I do think this is going to continue to grow like Breonna Taylor, and it's one of those things where Breonna's mother is going to come. We're going to show the world that her life matters. And get this, Roland Martin, he's still employed by the Baytown Police Department. He is still a cop? He is still a cop. Was he, put on, was he, was he put on desk duty? Well, they, they have him, uh, I guess, on desk duty or whatever, but they have not terminated his employment yet. And when you think about the disrespect between black women uh, and what they get, when George Floyd video went public, how he was killed, in 90 hours, they terminated all the police officers. 
I asked at the press conference when we were there with Tamika Palmer, how long did it take for them to fire the police officers after they killed Breonna Taylor? And she told me it took nine months for them to fire the police officer after they killed her daughter who was in her own apartment. And now it's almost two years and Baytown, Texas still hasn't fired the police officer. Uh, that is absolutely shocking and stunning. And so certainly uh, keep us abreast uh, of the developments in there. Uh, and you said there's going to be uh, a public demonstration on May 13th? May 13th, the two-year anniversary. Okay. All right, then. Oh, and, and, and also, Roland, the trial, the criminal trial is set to begin on May 25th, which ironically is the one-year anniversary of the killing of George Floyd. Wow. Uh, that is... Um, uh, this, and also, uh, the officer was indicted. What was the charge? It was uh, assault by a public uh, officer, like a manslaughter charge, not a murder charge. Not a murder charge. Right. Wow. Ben Crump, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so very much. And, and let me say this here. Um, and being while I have you, uh, I need people to understand Ben Crump does not try criminal cases. Uh, I, I need to say that, Ben, because I get all these people and they comment on YouTube and on social media. Uh, ben Crump keeps losing these cases. You're not the prosecutor. <laughs> the attorney yeah. for the family cannot prosecute cases. You can't indict anybody. You, you can file civil, you can file a civil lawsuit. You can negotiate settlements for families, but you don't get to prosecute anybody. Exactly. The Seventh Amendment of the Constitution say all the private law you can do is file a lawsuit for compensation for wrongful death. It's the Tenth Amendment. The prosecutors are who they should be upset and holding accountable but Roland, thank you for always uh, giving a voice to educate us and engage us, and most importantly, empower our people. You are so necessary to the culture. Uh, ben, I certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Uh, man, that, uh, th that video there is shocking, stunning uh, to sit there and witness. And the fact that it took place two years ago and just finding out about it. Uh, is even more uh, stunning as well. Uh, just unbelievable. Let me go to my pound. Dr. Greg Carr is chair, Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University. Amisha Cross, political analyst and Democratic strategist, and Brittany Lee Lewis, she's political analyst. Glad to have you both. Um, th th Brittany, to, to see that video, that's a, pre that's a pregnant black woman. And I, I keep going back to this issue of what, what sending police off, the woman's in emotional distress. You, we keep sending cops, people who, who are trained to kill people, to resolve these, these mental issues. This is what happens and you get these white cops whose first instinct is, oh, I can't control this black woman. Boom, 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 you're dead. Roland, let me, let me just say, first off, I'm still shaken um, by watching the film. Like, I'm uh, the, I'm almost to the point of, of tears because it's, it, they, they truly do not view us as humans. That is, and I, and I think that's the thing that hurts me the most. They do not view us as humans. And I think this goes back to the bigger question, right? Um, you know, if this trial, if that video that we just watched, um, if all of the years, the years, the decades, the centuries of police brutality and, and black death at the hands of the police doesn't teach us anything, it's that um, police training is not a full on solution to this problem. We can't train them into viewing us as humans. We can't train them into respecting us. Um, it's a band aid to a much more complex issue. And I know I always say this on the show, um, but again, we have to go back to the roots of police 
policing and why policing exists in the first place. Um, it is certainly not to protect and serve us as black folks. Um, and I hope that we can continue to demand to, you know, defund the police for this very reason. Because like you said earlier, this is not, not only do they not view us as humans, um, but they're also, even if they are to stay in place in the current, uh, you know, in the current way that they are, you know, they are not trained to deal with medical emergencies. They are not trained to deal, um, at least not adequately, and they shouldn't be dealing with these issues because they don't have the necessary skill set. Um, so I, I pray that we continue to push for defunding the police and thinking of, of new ways um, to envision public safety. Um, Greg Carr, um, it, it is indescribable to, to have to talk about these type of videos. There are people who say, yo, we shouldn't show them. But I'm, I'm, but too much of, too much of me is like Mamie Teal Mobley. No, America needs to see what they did to my baby. Because if we act as if, no, 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 don't show it, that's just too much. No, no, it needs to be seared in the minds of America. Agreed. Um, I agree with what you said, uh, Brittany. Uh, we have to now not rethink, but really think about public safety. We are not part of the public. Not only are we not human, we are not living creatures. We are a threat to be neutralized. Uh, this bastard, La Cruz, shouldn't be comfortable in his bed at night. He shouldn't be comfortable on the job. He shouldn't be comfortable going back and forth to the job. He should be living in the same fear um, for his life that we live in. At that point, we could talk about a common framework. There is no common framework. Black people are to be killed. Black men are to be killed. Black women are to be killed. Billie Holiday's birthday was yesterday. She was handcuffed to the bed that she died in by the goddamn federal government agents of the police because she was not a human being. Uh, Pamela Turner cannot receive justice. Justice would be at least restoring her life and it'd be beautiful, wouldn't it be, if we could just exchange De La Cruz's life for hers. Every time you pull your taser out, you punk. You get tased yourself. Every time you shoot, empty your clip into a black woman, those bullets go into your body. What we saw in Minnesota today, we can't be distracted and we'll, later on we'll talk about voting rights, but, but the parallel is this. Uh, what Nelson, Eric Nelson is counting on, the defense attorney for Chauvin and his team, they're counting on one person in that jury who does not look at black people as human. So while we are all, as human beings, bowled over by Dr. Tobin's uh, description today, that all the breath had left, George, all the oxygen had left George Floyd's body, and that cracker kneeled on him for another three minutes and two seconds. As we heard the testimony yesterday of all the experts that said, this isn't a question of meth or anything else that killed uh, George Floyd. Understand that the logic at play, whether it be there in Texas or in Minnesota, is this. Is there one on the jury who will, who will say and agree with Nelson's cocktail of meth, rage, criminal, he's not a, he's a big criminal, and there was a mob threatening me, so that they say, like that cop shooting the sister, you know what, you had to do it, man, because these are dangerous things. This, there, there is no, there is no common framework of understanding, so we, until we understand that, until we understand that, and showing these videos maybe gets us a little step closer, but we then have to change the language to interpret what those videos are showing us. Until we understand that, we will continue to bark up the wrong tree in this country and start talking, well, I can't believe, and I can't believe. No, not only should you believe it, you should expect it, because this is the thing that this criminal enterprise was set up to do since the day that these people showed up on these shores and did it to the Native Americans. Amisha, um, we, we talk about Reckoning, we talk about where we are. We dealt with people who, oh, no, 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 don't say defund because, you know, we don't want to get uh, the white folks riled up. This is where we have to be so hardcore that we say, no, 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 we will not stop. 
We 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 will not stop. I, I mean, Sunday was the 53rd anniversary of the murder of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I've interviewed Reverend Jackson, Ambassador Andrew Young, Bill Lucy, Reverend Dr. James Lawson, all the individuals who were there, who were in Memphis. And what is still stunning to me is to hear them say that even as they sat in room 306 of the Lorraine Motel, hours earlier he had been murdered. Their focus was, we, we cannot stop. We will not stop. John Lewis told me he didn't grieve for another three months. What I'm saying is to this generation, we got to ratchet it even more, put even more pressure. We saw, we saw those protests last year. Yo, we can't let America sleep. Um, I'm sitting here, so, so when Ben said, and I'm, I'm looking now, um, and again, folks, th this is what happens when um, you don't have to seek uh, permission. Um, I'm looking here, give me a second. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and say it. Uh, we'll be in Baytown May 13th to broadcast that march. We'll be there. I don't have to ask anybody else's opinion. We have to keep this stuff front and center because MSNBC is not going to do it. CNN is not going to do it. Fox News is not going to do it. We have no choice but to continue to press and press and press. No, you're absolutely correct, Roland. And to your, to your point just a few moments ago, our mere existence as black people in this country causes white people to be riled up. We don't have to be doing anything but living and raising our kids. And at the end of the day, white people are going to be riled up. Let us not, you know, get highfalutin and actually want to have rights as ensured by, you know, us being born under the red, white, and blue right here in these United States and actually push to have our civil rights recognized. That's us taking a bridge too far. I feel like what we're seeing right now, and I hate the term racial reckoning, I really do, because racial reckoning is thrown about in this country whenever the rest of the globe sees us and asks, what the hell are you doing, United States? How do you actually police the entire rest of the globe about, you know, uh, about having these anti-democratic standards, about um, their humanitarian, their failure to actually recognize humanity. Meanwhile, in your own backyard, you are treating black people worse than dogs. You are holding your knee on people. You are holding your knee on the neck of a man. And we're watching this trial continue to go forward, where we've heard from a pulmonologist who made it very clear in no uncertain terms that the knee on the neck of George Floyd, the cutting off of his oxygen, was what caused his death. Not any level of drugs, not any past drug history, nothing in that day would have caused his death other than the knee on the neck. And he made it also clear that it could have been you or I or anyone else who was an otherwise healthy person with no prior history of drug abuse whatsoever and had a sustained knee been on our neck in the exact same framework for over nine minutes, we would not have made it either. So I think that what we're seeing here is basically, a, a, again, a televised process of brutality against African Americans. and. You know, I would hope that we see jurors that understand what's going on. I don't have a very strong hope for it, but I do hope that we see jurors that understand what's going on, but also that African Americans of all ages aren't lulled away by this and have full recognition that, yes, corporations are signing these pledges. Yes, we're seeing some movement by them in terms of heralding Black Lives Matter, but it's going to be more than that. These same corporations play this song and dance every few years after there is a, a, a major issue um, where a African-American, unarmed African-American dies. Then we watch as soon as it's no longer at the helm of MSNBC or it's no longer played on loop on CNN. When those stations no longer care, guess what? That outside world no longer cares either. But we still have these issues facing our community every single day. So I do thank, you know, our, our, our forebears when it comes to the civil rights movement, our forebears who were able to continue to carry that, to carry that lantern, to continue to force change, even though they watched, you know, the folks who watched Martin Luther King die, who marched with him and then sat in the room and had those conversations and were able to somehow keep their mourning within themselves, but continue to do the work that is worth doing. That's the work that we all have to do and all have to be 
invested in. Because as we can see on a daily basis, our very humanity is at risk because the greater society, the white society that continues to ignore our existence and our existence is not only humans, but people that are worthy of being treated equally. That's not something that they're willing to do. And that's not something that the majority of them are actually willing to even stand for. Give you a little, but not too much. But if you start talking about equity in general, no, because that puts you on the same framework and the same platform as them. And they don't want that. And they will fight to the end to eradicate it. That's that's the reason we saw the January 6th insurrection. That's the reason why people won't let go of a lot of these theories that they call Trumpism that existed long before Trump, but actually were said out loud <laughs> during his presidency. It's not going away anytime too soon. And I think that we have to be invested in this long haul fight because that's what we're in for. Folks, um, look, I'm, I'm making the commitment. We'll be there. Uh, Pamela Turner, May 13th, uh, the protest that will take place in Baytown, Texas, uh, which is uh, not far from Houston at all. Uh, we want to see as many of you there. I will get details uh, from Ben Crump uh, and others uh, with regards uh, to uh, all of this information to provide it for you. Uh, we will make our way down there to broadcast that uh, as well, because again, we need to be able to keep the focus on that. Uh, we'll also find out if that trial is going to be broadcast uh, like we're seeing the George Floyd trial uh, right now. Uh, and if so, uh, we're going to make sure that we carry it right here on Roller Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, back to that Roller Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.